Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Marketing Podcast, your source for all things marketing. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Eric Rosada on the line, and he is the CEO over at Karma Snack Marketing. Eric? Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So uh, excited to get into Karma Snack Marketing and what you're doing in our broader topic today. We're going to talk about some SEO and what businesses need to be thinking about. Um, so let's just dive right in. Tell us a little bit more about Karma Snack Marketing. Oh, Karma Snack uh, Marketing is a digital agency we've had now going on 17 years. Uh, so over, almost for two decades, we've been serving servicing uh, enterprise level companies from AT&T, Verizon, Time Warner, Comcast. We actually did all the marketing and tourism for the country of Panama, created their perspectives. Um, and since then, we, we deal with everything from social media all the way down to consulting. So what are the right kind of businesses that you work with? Or what, and what, what particular niches do you work in, if any? Yeah, so our, our main focus is that are companies that are looking to actually grow uh, via lead generation or e-commerce. Um, we actually specialize in building and developing e-commerce-based businesses. And uh, any any particular niches that you favor more than others, or is it just kind of across the board in terms of e-commerce? I don't know. Health is making a big push now. Mm. <laughs> so um, I will tell you right now with everything that's going on in the marketplace, I don't think uh, I don't think we're going to be touching cruise. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think so either. Let's uh, let's get into let's get into SEO. So, what should businesses be thinking about when it comes to SEO? Yeah. So, essentially, Karma Stack was founded on the premise um, of the fact that there's two essential things necessary to grow a business, right? So, early stage growth, which requires funding, and you know, long term value, which requires vision. Okay. Mm. Um, a lot of times we deal with companies that are starting off and they really don't have the financials in mind. They don't have the long-term in mind. They really haven't, you know, uh, developed their marketing budgets properly with with uh, correlating methodologies. It's usually just like, well, this is what we can afford. But, you know, they're not thinking about, you know, what happens once we grow and we have 20 employees and then 40 employees. When Karma Snack started, we had a 3,000% growth rate over a four-year period. So we started off in my kitchen counter, then I brought some friends in, and uh, my my son, who was two months old at the time, was in the background. I have to run down the hallway to do sales, <laughs> continue to grow it, continue to grow the company, and within about four years period, we had 250 employees, okay? So you never know when you start your business what's going to happen. You just don't know, right? So preparing yourself for the what ifs without overthinking, process by over analysis, those are some of the key important parts that you want to play a role in, right? And you want to think about solutions before they happen. And I, I essentially got my, my background in Internet marketing when I was in the Marine Corps, and we learned how to code and develop. I used to actually charge uh, Marines on, you know, on, on ship uh, about $2 per email uh, just because they didn't know what an ad symbol was back in 1999. The Internet was so brand new. Mm. Mm. So, you know, I went from, you know, sending out emails in the Marine Corps to developing methodologies for, you know, some of the largest uh, companies in the country. And, again, you never know what's going to happen, right? So we know today there's a lot of public speakers, a lot of people out there like yourself that are doing amazing things. But, you know, I'm, I'm sure like this business right now, it, it just you just don't realize until you're in the thick of things how exciting it's going to be for you, you know, wh where the passion is going to come from. Is it social media? Is it email? Is it website development? Is it finding a, a financial solution? Is it AdWords? There's so many different channels nowadays. Um, so as an owner talking to small businesses, I would say like, look, you know, you never, you never know where the conversation is going to lead, but just be prepared to speak in front of Congress very, very quickly and have everything together prior to launching the brand. So I know this is going to change from, you know, company owner to company owner, obviously, and founder to founder and their level of expertise and all those other good things. But I do know working with as many companies as you've worked with that certain themes arise. Where do you find a lot of founders go wrong in the beginning when it comes to kind of creating these strategies? So where, where founders go wrong in creating the strategies is they're not thinking about the type of people they're going to be working with and the type of people they need, right? 
So we've all heard teamwork makes a dream work, right? So when you're working with individuals, a, a lot of companies make a lot of mistakes by spending money unnecessarily with silver tongue salespeople that say, hey, I'm going to promise you this, I'm going to promise you that. You know, the fact of the matter is, you know, all businesses have three components, not 50, marketing, operations, and sales. And we teach a Moz methodology in our company. It's actually something we coined and we developed ourselves where you break down these components of your business by these three tiers. You figure out the type of individual you need to run that tier. You find the individual you need and the skill sets they have. And there's a lot of sites, job sites, that you can find out what skills these individuals have. And don't overpay somebody. You don't want to pay $70,000 a year for a social media coordinator. And you don't want to underpay someone. You don't want to get, a, you know, a CFO for 35000 a year either. So when it comes to building a team, like the military, I've taken the same approach. And you have to find out what the actual true requirements are. What do you need in order to be successful? And you break it down by resource allocation, such as time. How much time does it take to do the job? Once you understand what it takes to do the job, you're going to realize whether Justin or Kate have the right experience. If they're doing the job and it takes them six hours, then you look at components like training and you look at components like HR and things like that. If, if they're getting it done in an hour, well, then you have a winner. You have to figure out, okay, wait, is there something I'm missing in the methodology to get the results? Are the results going to measure what essentially we're going? So it all starts from the team, the team that you're going to need in the future. And it sounds, it sounds a little bit crazy, but every time we deal with a startup, we go through an exercise. Okay, imagine you had a marketing department. What would that look like for you? So you have a graphics team. Within a graphics team, you may have eight individuals. Within the development team, you may have four individuals. Okay, within an SEO team, you again, you're going back, you may have four individuals. So thinking about their team over the long term and starting backwards, reverse engineering that, they're going to be a lot more successful than the company that we've worked with in the past because when they start off, usually they've already received the funding, the VC funder, the family office has given them the money. They're saying, I want you to use Jared. Jared's had a company. He's been successful in that company and this company. We've had over 3,500 clients. So for us, we've worked in a lot of different verticals. So we've seen the mistakes that our clients have made with their own businesses, and we can address them properly for the next customer. Now, whether or not the customer um, – is apprehensive enough to to want to hear what we have to say because we, we really try not to cross the line of being a business consultant and try to stay in our lane when it comes specifically to SEO. But because SEO deals with the long-term investment, we start off with that in mind. So circling back to SEO, I mean, with changes in advertising laws and all this other stuff with cookies and all these other things that are happening, I mean, to me, SEO, because, I mean, it was one of the fundamental things that people started doing, and some people forgot when there was some other um, thing, you know, the new shiny toy, right? But to me, SEO is always going to be the core foundation. Does SEO become more important now? Uh, even more relevant than it was when it kind of first came on the scene, mm-hmm. essentially, which was organizing. And the reason why SEO is not dead, and, and I've written some pretty interesting blogs, uh, one in particular had about 18,000 views, which is called SEO is Dead. And I used to do a lot of search engine market share reports. Um, I mean, Nielsen published our information. We've had over 2,000 different universities publish our information, okay? And is SEO still a good investment? I get asked that question all the time. SEO is so important because at the end of the day, the one thing that hasn't changed really is driving long-term results. You need the, mm-hmm. the right techniques, okay? You, your business needs to go. And exactly what the heck is SEO? It stands for search engine optimization. So Google made changes, and they make constant changes. Well, we will optimize for those changes, right? Now, a lot of SEOs are going to be out of business because they don't up, upgrade their techniques or their strategies, mm-hmm. or they're not keeping in contact with what's happening on Google. But organic traffic is free traffic, and years ago at a conference, an individual, Google made an algorithm change. This is a $150 million company that went down to about $50 million company overnight. Because wow. Of but they had been there for seven years. Now, keep in mind, yeah. Eric Schmitz was asked the question, you know, why are you guys trying to put us out of business? His simple re- reply was, if you're such a good businessman, why would you put your business model in the hands of a third party? You don't control. Wow. And, it, and a lot of people went, hmm, good point. Maybe we shouldn't build a business. So what we try to do is maintain 
the status quo where SEO essentially is no more than – marketing is no more than 20% of a company's revenue, right? Sales mm-hmm. channels come from different places. Out of the marketing component, you have display, you have search, you have email, you have brand, it's a branding play, lead gen play. But again, SEO is no more than 20% of the marketing pie. It should never be 100% of the marketing pie. But again, this goes back to concepts and fundamental business uh, advice that individuals get from VCs, they get from their business coaches. I mean, you can get this from anywhere. But in order to be effective, especially with SEO, you have to understand that you, we don't know Google. We can't guarantee results. We can't guarantee you number one position, number two, or number three. We can't. We just can't guarantee it. What we do guarantee is we're going to optimize your website for a lot of different facets that Google has, okay? And the Google rankings have changed. The updates come in from Panda to Penguin. I mean, they have so many different names at this point. I mean, uh, I don't know if Pigeon's next, but there was a Pigeon in 2014. There was a Hummingbird in 2013, right? So, you know, you have Bert in 2019. So there's all these different changes with funny names that come in and out. But at the end of the day, you know, laying out bi-directional encoding information, it's basically, you're, it's like you're talking about neural networks when you're having a discussion via sales to a client who knows nothing about SEO. Or even if they know a little, they know the term SEO, but they're really relating it to the first page of Google. They're not relating it to the entire platform. And I think at this point, it's not where we were in 2005. Google has a lot of divisions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a lot of places there to get traffic, oh, yeah. like like attorneys. We market for attorneys. It's not to get them on the first page of Google. We could do a case study or write about a case study, and we can get a, another returning specifically to refer that traffic. Mm. You know? What are the um, – like? This, so there's a lot of business owners, entrepreneurs, executives listening right now, and there's some decision makers who are in charge of making that, making that call on what company they're going to hire to do their SEO. What are some questions or what are some things they should be looking at when interviewing companies to do their SEO, to be a potential, a potential vendor? Yeah, so we actually – you can again, you can find this information on our website at karmasnack.com. But we've written a lot of blogs about how to choose an SEO company. I think actually most companies that are starting off in SEO, they actually, that's their first blog piece, how to choose a company and separate themselves. What we look for in a company are results. So our our mission statement is to help companies fulfill theirs, period. Okay. And it starts off with results. So our tagline, only results matter, is because that's all that matters, right? So Google has a lot of different methodologies that, that we apply to business and it's basically start off with the end results in mind. So when you're looking at a company and you're asking them, you know, can you SEO, you're hiring them to get you rankings, not revenue. You're hoping the revenue is a result of their rankings, that the visibility you gain from being on the first page is enough to convert a click to a lead or a sale. Okay. So ask them for their rankings. How many rankings do they have? Um, currently, our company is already generating, we're already past the 5 million mark in terms of the amount of rankings we generated on Google. Okay. Mm. And it took 17 years to do that. Um, but it really depends. You want to see the rankings. You want to see their methodologies. And they should be able to tell you the strategy. There's no, again, it's not G14 classified. It's not some secret <laughs> algorithm. We're working with Google. Like, all it feels like to pretend that we're scientists and we created this. We did not create this. This is a very simple thing. We provide information to Google, and we make sure the page is actually well-developed and designed for users. So ask the SEO team that you're looking at hiring, what does the page structure look like for you guys, and how do you guys go about creating backlinks? Backlinks are an essential part of SEO. You can get them from spammy websites, which can penalize you, or you can get high-quality backlinks, okay? And there's a lot of companies that come up with algorithms and waiting, and this, this link means this. It's very simple. If the link is on a site that looks spammy and it has a bunch of ads everywhere, well, you don't want your, your ad there. You don't want your website there, okay? If it's a safe environment like a guest post where I'm able to exchange, Adam, do you mind if I give you a blog and you give me a blog and I write a thousand words that make sense to your company and it's on point and it's on brand? Why wouldn't you want to publish good quality content? That's SEO. Optimizing the image for screen readers, so individuals that are blind, that's SEO. Ask him questions. Ask your SEO if he knows about ADA compliance. Ask him if he knows about W3C. W3C is the worldwide consortium. It is, it is what the United States uses in this country in order to provide information for the American Disabilities Act. So it is the gold standard. 
of how internet marketing should be done. Ask him about things like schema, which are tags that we use to appropriate to tell a computer, hey, this is a video, this is a picture. Ask him about their knowledge, you know. Maybe they have a case study. A lot of SEOs share case studies. I know that a lot of clients sign MBAs and they, they may or may not be able to publish those case studies that are relevant to your business. But talk about relevancy. When it comes to SEO, the number one question, have you worked in my industry before? There are 20,000 sickos, a standard industrial codes in the United States. Chances are I've not worked with every company or every industry, okay? We did get a, a request in Adam years ago from a company that sold missile containers, and he wanted to sell them on Alibaba, okay? You can imagine to my disbelief that I was like, is this legal? Am I going to prison? What's going to happen? And we're freaking out over here, and I'm like, is this serious? And lo and behold, we were able to SEO the heck out of it and get this guy traffic on Alibaba because it was perfectly legal, <laughs> right? Because it's his container, it's his patents, it's his rights. He wasn't doing anything. So, you know, we deal with reputation management, and, you know, we get individuals that say, well, you know, I've done this, and I've done this, and I've done this, and I need it off of Google. It's, there's no real, you know, law that Google has that says you need to follow these laws in order to SEO us. You know, Google mm -hmm. wants you to SEO but at the same time, they want clean optimization for websites. And that's what we provide. That's what most SEOs provide. Um, certifications are okay. The problem is I we when I got into this industry, there were no certification. There were no courses. I think right now I've already got – I get about 1,000 calls a month. Hey, we can provide you a certification, a gold seal. <laughs> it's okay. You know, the fact that we've uh, worked with the Fortune 15, I think we're okay. We can justify it, you know, but – hey, you know, certifications never hurt to ask, hey, do you guys have certifications in SEO? Is your team well trained? What I would ask for is can you give me some referrals, right? Clients are usually very happy with our SEO, and the only thing I would say is, you know, sometimes their clients think, oh, yeah, try to ask them this, and then they ask about price. How much is he charging? And they wind up negotiating. So <laughs> it's like they're negotiating without speaking with me, but it's always interesting how – you know, when people are interviewing SEOs, they, they're just afraid to talk about money. How much is this mm. going to cost me? What's this going to net me out? Um, you know, because SEO is a long-term play. We, unfortunately, don't work with companies who are, who are looking for results within the first six months. Hey, I need a return on investment within the first six months. It, it's just not realistic. It's not going to happen. Mm. All great stuff, Eric. And I can talk to you about this all day long, but we're about out of time. Um, if somebody's listening to this, Eric, and they want more information on Karma Snack Marketing, what's the best way for them to reach out? Go to our website. And, you know, you can you can also use keywords in Miami to find us. But, <laughs> but you know, for SEO, <laughs> we're always trying to SEO no matter what. Use the keyword. <laughs> but the best way is just go to our website, karmasnack.com. That's at karma with a K, snack like a snack for your kids. Fantastic. Well, hey, Eric, um, awesome having you on the show today. Um, had a lot of fun and learned a lot about SEO and what's going yeah. on over at Commerce Snack Marketing. And to the thank audience, for as always, us. absolutely. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. Hope you had a lot of fun listening because we had a lot of fun making this for you. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. If you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Marketing, give us a subscribe there and also leave us some comments in the video section. Love to hear your thoughts and kind of what kind of projects you're working on. And uh, Eric, thanks again for coming on the show.